Hello everybody, Sanier, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about the top CRISPR companies in this space right now, top one to top three. And of course, this was inspired by this tweet you're looking at from Happy Camper 140, one of our followers in this channel, in this community. And basically, Happy Camper Trading tweeted, Okay, guys, enough is enough. Choose one horse to go to war with. I am aware all are good for certain things. If the industry had one winner takes all, which one would it be? CRISPR Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, and Antelia Therapeutics. And obviously, then he starts tweeting certain handles, Twitter handles here. And this is actually a great question because we are in 2022, basically halfway of 2022. Uh beyond halfway, right? We're on the month of June at this point. Uh, so we are entering in the second half of this year. Um, if you exclude December, because December is usually the time where people start taking off vacations and of course, Christmas and so on. We've already are pa way past the half point of 2022. So obviously, a lot of things have happened this year so far. Uh, we have seen a lot of companies come out with amazing data whether that is CRISPR therapeutics, whether that is NTLA, NTLA, whether that is Caribou Biosciences, we sort of saw some continuation of the struggles with Editas, and we saw some good things coming out from Beam Therapeutics and some other companies as well, podcast episodes from Verve Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, uh, and generally lots of things have happened in the second, the first half of 2022, including, including the partnerships between Pfizer and Beam Therapeutics, for example, and of course, Moderna dipping into the CRISPR landscape, not partnering with a CRISPR company, but obviously dipping their toes in the CRISPR landscape. Now, the reason why it's important to sort of, you know, step back here and look at this space now is because a lot, of, as much as things have happened in the science world with data, with science, um, with the stocks, when it comes to the Wall Street, when it comes to stock prices, lots of things have happened since then, right? Market crash, I mean, the market crash started late 2021. For biotech, it happened early part of 2021. So we're like literally like a year and a half into the market crash for biotech, the longest bear market of all times. Uh, it's breaking records at this point. It was the longest bear market by the end of 2021. So uh, you can imagine this record will stay for a while, right? Um, so lots of things have gone wrong in terms of stock prices. Uh, but of course, numbers don't lie. And when I mean numbers don't lie, I'm of course relating to science, right? And, you know, I'm going to pull up here a valuation of each company here. Of course, shout out to CRISPR investors on YouTube and on Twitter for uh, assembling this type of diagram. Very simple, straight and gets the job done. So obviously in the left column, you see all the company's names, stock price, stock symbol, sorry. And on the right side, you see the market valuation in USD for each of these companies, right? So obviously starting at the top, CRISPR Therapeutics at 5.42 billion, and TLA at 3.26 billion, and then all the way down to Graphite Biosciences at just over $139 million, right? So here's here's the reason why I wanted to make this video on a, on a Sunday, right? Um, I mean, we, we all know what's going on in the markets. You know, it's it'll be just another video repeater if I was to, you know, talk about the market crash and how it, they're totally disconnected with what's happening in the science world, especially with the data we got from CRISPR therapeutics, from NTLA, from Caribou Biosciences. But I think it's a good exercise to sort of rank them, or at least top three, right? And of course, this is my ranking. This is not yours ranking. I'm not trying to say this should be your ranking, but I'm going to give you guys my ranking and I'm going to explain why I selected this ranking, right? So out of this list, right, and you'll see why my ranking here, it is important because you see how markets are totally disconnected with science. To me, the number three CRISPR company would be Caribou Biosciences, right? This is number three for me. Number two would be NTLA. And number one would be CRISPR Therapeutics, right? And I would put, of course, Beam Therapeutics at number four. Right. So let, let me explain why I didn't put beam therapeutics within the top three, right? Before you guys start, you know, disliking and going crazy in the comment section. So when I got in this space, guys, you know, I always looked at the data, right? I looked at research papers. I looked at preclinical data. I even looked at clinical data for some of these companies that had clinical data. By the time I got in the market, 
Uh, it was it, when with genomics, it was just really CRISPR therapeutics that had data at the time. Um, but since then, NTLA posted their data, Graph Caribou Biosciences posted their data, and of course, Editas posted further data on humans. But of course, the unstable le leadership and the fact that it's all a mess with their programs uh, disallow me to bid them any near at, at the top three rankings, right? The reason why I'm not putting Beam Therapeutics number three is because, look, guys, I'm a big fan of Beam Therapeutics, the CEO, of John Evans. You know, I'm a big follower. I listen to all the episodes and I look at what they're doing in the space with base editors. They force NTLA to submit patents or at least try to submit patents for, uh, for ownership of base editors. Uh, and we've seen CRISPR Therapeutic CEO talk about base editing as well throughout their interviews in the late 2021, early 2022. So we know Beam Therapeutics changed the game when it comes to base editors. We know they're doing something that other companies don't are not doing and they don't have the technology, right? And in this list, there's Verve Therapeutics out there that are obliged to provide 50% of their revenue in the event that they go forward and submit FDA and get FDA approval for their program of course, tackling heart disease and so on because they're licensing their technology from base editors from Beam Therapeutics. So clearly Beam Therapeutics is doing really something really good. However, they don't have phase one clinical data. And again, by the end of this year, maybe by, I don't think we're gonna get anything by this in the year to be honest, but by maybe mid or end of 2023, when Beam Therapeutics do give data, then I'm gonna be in a posi position to potentially put Beam Therapeutics in the top three, but until then, I'm putting CRISPR therapeutics, NTLA, and Caribou Biosciences, respectively, one, two, three, mainly because of their data, mainly because of their cash balance, mainly because of what they were able to do uh, in the last two years. Um, it's just a shame that Caribou is now is worth literally the one before the worst, and this worst Graphic Bio to me is going to be either acquired or bankrupt. Uh, I don't think Graphic Bio will survive. I think if there are going to be losers, I don't think Graphic Bio will survive. I don't think Editas will survive. I think they'll be either acquired, probably acquired because they have a technology, they have patents and licensing there. I don't think they'll survive in terms of your data and publishing data. Uh, maybe they'll just form, you know, partnerships here and there and just license their technology in the hopes that others do the inhuman data. Um, but, you know, that's just my thoughts. Verve Therapeutics, I think they will succeed with Beam Therapeutics, of course, uh, but this is going to play out some time. I mean, that Twitter thread that I talked to you guys about, a lot of people saying, well, next one to two years, it's going to be CRISPR therapeutics. Next two to five years, potentially NTLA. But then after five years, they strongly be beam therapeutics will be up there as number one. And I think that's a fair statement. But in my opinion right now, as we stand, and in my opinion, again, in the next year, CRISPR therapeutic is still king. I think NTLA has done an amazing job, but they're still number two. And Caribou Biosense says, at an amazing job with CBO10. Of course, durability is yet to be tested over a six month period for other patients, but I think uh, lots of great things are coming for all three companies. CRISPR therapeutics have those, the many patients, I think they have over 80% of market share, if that's how you wanna classify it, with the amount of CRISPR-based therapy uh, patients dose, right, around the world, which is mind boggling, right? And there's a reason why they're number one, in my opinion, right? So. We'll end it like this, guys. Hopefully, you guys are having a beautiful Sunday. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Sorry for the late video, guys. Just having a stomach virus um, the past two days. So I thought about not doing a video today, but um, I said, why not? You know, give you guys something here to think about. So hopefully, you guys appreciate this video. Like this video, find value. Subscribe if you're not. And let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the top company in the CRISPR landscape or top three. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys during the week. Thank you.